Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at multiplication using an area diagram. I want you to understand by the end of this lesson what an area diagram is and how it might be helpful, and also what students are doing with them, because um, I know a lot of parents haven't seen them before and maybe are looking for what is this new way of multiplying. First off, area diagrams are just a visual way of showing multiplying. They're typically used or starting to be used with two-digit multiplication. And I want to give some background on why we would use an area diagram for multiplication problems. So here is a rectangle, and if you're asked to find the area, what you can do is draw in a bunch of squares and count all of them, or you can use the easier way, which is multiplying. 4 times 2, which gives us 8. In other words, area can be found by multiplying. So if we're asked to multiply, we can model it using an area diagram. All right, let's get into actually what an area diagram might look like. Here we go. If you're asked to multiply this question 3 times 12 using an area diagram, here's what you might do. You could either do what we did in that last question and count out all of the squares, but what we're going to do instead is that we are going to actually divide 12 into being 10 and 2. And what that does when you divide each place value is you make smaller square rectangles in this case, and you can find the area of each of those and then add them up. It makes it a little bit easier to, to work with. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this would actually do. It would give us a question of 3 times 10, and also 3 times 2, two separate rectangles. And at this point you might be saying, holy cow, you've taken one multiplication question and you've made it into two multiplication questions, why are you doing this? And the reason is that it's easier to do the smaller multiplication questions in your head. So for mental math purposes, it might actually be easier to, to recognize that 3 times 12 is 3 times 10 plus 3 times 2. It might just be an easy way to recognize. So let's talk about what we would actually get here. It would be 3 times 10 is 30, 3 times 2 is 6, so those could go in here. The area of this section is 30 and the area of this section is 6. Remember, that's how many squares we're covering it before, but now we don't tend to draw in all of those squares as we work. So here we go, and then we would add up those two areas to get our final answer of 36. Now, you might have looked at that question 3 times 12 and said, I know 3 times 12 is 36. But when you're first learning multiplication, that one might be challenging. And the typical way that people learn to do multiplication looks like this. If you're given 3 times 12, you would take 2 times 3 gives me 6, and then 10 times 3, so I have to add the 0 there, and then do 1 times 3, which is 3, add them up and you get 36. But one very common mistake with this is that you do 2 times 3 is 6, and then 1 times 3 is 3, add them up and you get 9. This is one of the most common mistakes students make when they're first multiplying. So using the area diagram, it helps to show why we need to add that 0. It's a visual way that makes us know that's not the equivalent of 3. That's 30 squares, not 3 squares. And it helps us to recognize when we were making mistakes and why we're making mistakes. Now let's actually do it with a question that's a little bit more practical. 26 times 37. We're going to multiply this out the way that maybe a traditionally your parents might have learned to do it, and then we'll show this step by step with, um, with the area diagram. Let's do this. First, we would look at that 7 of 37 and multiply it 7 times 6, and it gives us 42. The 2 goes down, the 4 goes up, because the 4 is in the tens column. Then we would take 7 times 2, which is 14, and we would add that 4 to get 18. Then we move on to the 3. Because we're moving to the 3 in the tens column, we have to add a 0 there. 3 times 6 is 18. We put the 8 down, carry the 1. 
Then we multiply three times two to get six, add the one to be seven, and then we add up that number. This is the way probably most adults do multiplication of two digit on two digit in America. I was taught math in Canada where I grew up, and I think this is more of a European way to do it. Now, this is what I did, just for a reference here, is that I would take the number seven and multiply it times six and get 42. Then I multiply seven times 20, recognizing that that two in the first 26 means 20, so I would get 140, it's adding that zero in there. Then I'd move on and three times six is 18 with a zero and three times two is six with two zeros. And then I add all of those up and I get 962. And the first time I did multiplication this way, my wife kind of looked at me strange and said, why are you drawing in all of those extra lines there? And basically what it is, is making sure that every single number gets multiplied times every single other number. And that's something that you can use moving forward. And that is actually, Again, the more of the European way of doing math is connected very closely with our area diagram. So let's look at the area diagram now with these two numbers, 26 times 37. We're going to divide it up. The actual area of the squares don't really matter as much as long as we're dividing up um, each place value. So the 20 goes there, the 6 goes there, the 30 goes there, the 7 goes there, and we're going to find the area of each rectangle. 20 times 30, 6 times 30, 20 times 7, and 6 times 7. Notice those are exactly the same numbers, 42, 140, 180, and 600, that I found doing it in that more European method um, with the red digits over there. So this is basically what we're doing. And we're doing it in a visual way so that you can see Oh, the biggest block is 600. Okay, great. Um, again, it's not <clears throat> completely proportional, so it might not work out perfectly, but you recognize that that big area is not just six, it's 600. Let's look at another question. Again, we are only using the area diagram for this one. Let's do it. So we have this one, 91 times 78. I'm going to divide it up using exactly the same size of square. I, I'm, I'm not trying to make it proportional at all. Um, I'm just recognizing that 90 goes here, 1 goes here, 70 is there, and 8 is there. Each box is going to be filled in with the area for each. 90 times 70, 1 times 70, 90 times 8, and 1 times 8. And then I can solve for those pieces. 1 times 8 is 8. Notice that's what I would have put right here, one times eight or eight times one. Nine times eight is seven, or 90 times eight is 720. One times 70 is 70. And 90 times 70 is 6,300. We take all of those pieces, add them up, and that would give us our total amount. 91 times 78 is 7,098. It also shows us in a visual way gives us all the pieces that we need. Once you get good at this, you don't necessarily need to draw the area diagram. You could just write it out this way. It avoids a lot of those errors with adding in zeros. Now, that's the biggest thing that this helps to avoid. All right, let's talk about why we would ever use vi um, these diagrams again. It's a visual way to show what you're doing. It can help people not miss a step when they're multiplying two digit numbers. It can help with visual learners and it's a good way to introduce multiplication um, in two digit multiplication um, and three digit multiplication, any multiple digit multiplication. There are some downsides to these area diagrams and they're the same downsides that you would find with a tape diagram that I, I indicated in the last video. It is definitely inefficient to draw a big um, rectangle every single time you're doing a multiplication problem. It takes up more space, it's a little bit inefficient, and once the numbers become more complicated and you start getting into variables, it's definitely limited um, in, in what it can do and how helpful it is and how it's just at a certain point using this method almost becomes more complicated than the math questions themselves. So a good introduction, personally I don't use it um, beyond 
when when you start using variables but i know some people do like this di this um, method beyond that i hope that that introduction was helpful for you have a wonderful day